Once again, for those of you who don't pay attention to the names of the videos you're watching, this is part two, part two of Horror Nights History, HHN4, that is Halloween Horror Nights 4. When we start the next section later, about 95, it'll be a lot more interesting, or a lot easier to label these because we'll have the various event titles and catchphrases, which before this was just Halloween Horror Nights 2, 3, 4. Starting 95, they changed that. But we haven't got there yet, have we? No, 94. Well, I left off in part one talking about uh, a dungeon of terror. And I pretty much covered uh, all I wanted to say about that at that time. There were two additional houses then, besides the returning uh, psychopath and coming back for the first time since 92, Dungeon of Terror. And these two completely brand new houses, the first one was Hell's Kitchen. Now, Hell's Kitchen was also held in the Naserman uh, area, where the previous uh, the slaughterhouse had been. And Hell's Kitchen also was based on similar concepts, similar concepts to Slaughterhouse. And thus it's part of a larger uh, family of houses that have existed over the years that have been themed to cannibalism and eating people. Yes. Hell's Kitchen, however, was much more culinary. Instead of being in a slaughterhouse, you're actually in a kitchen where you were chased by people and chefs with blood all over the white tubes or whatever they call it, chef hats and with, the, with the cleavers and other pe butchers as well with butchers aprons and, and, some, and they are uh, trying to kill you and cut you to little bits to cook you up for dinner. Nom, 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 nom. Mm. And one nice thing about Hell's Kitchen compared to compared to the slaughterhouse, I think the slaughterhouse to some degree too, but this house you could, well, you know the old saying, you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen? And Gordon Ramsay was nowhere in sight back then. But you know what? It was freaking hot in that house. This was one of the first times they took advantage of the tactile sensation in a way of, of either making the house colder or hotter than it would normally be so that you get into it because you felt hot in there. It was hot. The, the fire from the ovens or the kitchens or something, it was hot. And on some nights, it was like, whew, you were sweating going through Hell's Kitchen. Also, in Hell's Kitchen was an interesting character who had been uh, in another, a different house a couple of years earlier, who was part of, I believe, a uh, Dungeon of Terror the second year they did it. Again, it's hard to remember exactly, but I know where he was in this year. The old Roach Man in a big glass case looking like some kind of mutant freak that had crawled out of a trailer park crawled out from under a trailer in a trailer park and he was there with all his roaches and they got the biggest fattest most hideous cockroaches they could get not your little palmetto bugs no they got great big freaking um madagascar roaches the big nasty ones that hiss at you they do they make audible noises you imagine a cockroach that makes audible noises? They sound like freaking rattlesnakes. They do. Hissing, hissing cockroaches. And they're this big. This big. Bigger than a palmetto. Twice as big as a palmetto bug. <laughs> Horrible things. And they're crawling all over him. And he's going, ah, letting him crawl in his mouth and everything. Going, ah. In a kitchen? Ew, Department of Health. Close that place down. If I'm going to eat human flesh, I want it to be safe. Anyway. <laughs> Clean, you know. USDA. Mm. A government approved long pork. Mm. So, now, the other house, or houses, perhaps. There was an area located for many years along the Avenue of the Stars um, off if you're going towards New York on your left, called the Boneyard. It was basically an area where they kept uh, stuff that they weren't currently using. Often you would go in there during, you know, and that's what they call an area like that in a movie studio. And so this was themed to it. 
And so guests would go in there and see things like old vehicles. You know, like uh, often you couldn't actually enter it, but you could see all these parked vehicles from movies. That was there, like, you know, the first couple of years that I can recall. Stuff like that. Uh, it's been used to various effect over the years. Nowadays, it's gone. You know, it's where that big stage is now. You know, and Rip Ride, Rocket, all of that stuff is... The Boneyard's dead, gone, you know. It's out of there. But for a long time, there was this big lot there along one side of, of, the, of the Avenue of the Stars where they could do stuff. And it was utilized for a haunted house once when they put up a big... Now, it, it says under a tent is, is what I've read in some places, but it wasn't a tent. As I remember, that there were walls and structures and ceilings. Well, I don't know if there were ceilings, but there was walls and structures. So it wasn't exactly a tent because you felt like you were indoors and there were indoor scenes, okay? Uh, but there were two mazes, two separate mazes. And I want to stress that. So it really should have been called the Bone Yards. And it wasn't themed to the Bone Yard. It had a very interesting theme. It was, this should sound interestingly familiar, an old, abandoned, insane asylum that had recently been excavated. Ooh, an insane asylum? Gosh, that sounds familiar. Is it there a house this year that's an old, abandoned, insane asylum? So, in effect, the Boneyard, which has been stressed more than you would think normally on the website in the archives, and this is an obscure house from 94, has a direct link to this year's Psychoscarapy Echoes of Shady Brook. There's a thematic link. Now, it's not Shady Brook, I'm saying, but there is a connection in that they both represented old abandoned asylums and where all the madness is not yet emptied from it. There's still something pretty wacky going on inside those walls. And sure enough, inside the asylum that was in the boneyard, you found all sorts of strange, horrible creatures and characters, including a whole bunch of evil clowns! Evil clowns in an asylum? Why, that sounds like maximum madness to me. <laughs> Again, connections, connections. There's connections through the years from one year to another, and even from 94 to 2006 there were mysterious connections. All right, legendary truth people, take notes. You may need them. <clears throat> also, there was an interesting contraption called the grinder. It was exactly what it sounds like, a gigantic meat-grinding device. you think that would be in Hell's Kitchen. Yeah. And there was also, in that boneyard, an evil mad scientist whose laboratory he was dissecting corpses that were bloated and obscene and guts and gore and freakish things. There were all sorts of skeletal remains and corpses. Ugh. It was quite a delightful little, little uh, place, actually, now. And it was amazing what they could do with that space, and if they put a tarp over it and put up some walls and structures so that it made a haunted house there. It's very nice. But again, two separate mazes. I can't really tell you the difference between two mazes. I don't remember. I did go through both. Uh, I think I went through them rather quickly at one point, and so I don't remember the distinctions very well. But these, and some of the clowns may have been in one maze and the scientists in another, or they may have been in the same but it was all themed, as I said, to insanity that had gone on in this asylum that had recently been opened, but had been closed for years and years, abandoned and derelict. So those were the houses. Other things that happened that year, there was a lot of entertainment. Once again, Bill and Ted came back for their third excellent Halloween adventure. This time, it was titled Bill and Ted Meet Time Cop. It was a uh, link to a Jean-Claude Van Damme movie called Time Cop, which, again, we have Bill and Ted meeting up with another time traveler and dealing with, of course, the usual conflict and, and all sorts of pop culture references and songs and dance. Uh, but Time Cop was the, was the one that was there. And, of course, 
There were a couple other shows. I did not see the Beetlejuice game show that was going on there in somewhere on New York or someplace. Uh, the Beetlejuice game show called The Price is Fright. Didn't see it. But I, I expect it was probably what you would expect of a game show hosted by Beetlejuice. And then there was another show which I saw a bit of uh, passing by. And it was basically a Vegas act with Satan as a lounge lizard. Remember an angel, they had that lounge lizard demon named uh, Lauren or something? Sort of like the only not gay and not green. You read and heterosexual. So you ever, you ever, you ever um, those of you may know about Coop, you know, the cartoonist who does devils? Very similar concept, you know, well-dressed, tie and suit Satan uh, in a Vegas lounge act with all these showgirls satanic slut showgirls and that's basically what satanic slut oh and this i think 94 might have been the first time it may have gone on before this and my memory's dim but this was one of the first years they really started using the sexy body distracting angle in the scary zone as well because you have big hunky guys with maybe gladiator heads and horns and leather straps big muscular guys walking around with lots of skin and at the same time you had girls up on platforms in skanky uh, costumes like Barbarian Girl or whatever, sitting up over the scare zone. So as you were going through Horrorwood, you might be depending on, you know, there was someone for any possible sexual orientation to, uh, to look on and goggle at, whether you're a straight boy, straight girl, gay boy, gay girl, whichever, is gonna, or, or someone who enjoys all of the above, you would still find something to look at and go, ooh, while someone comes up behind you and goes, ah! and get you, yo, distracto, distraction with a hot body, while well, I scare you trick, which would be done for many years in scare zones uh, to really good effect at Halloween Horror Nights, and I think it started this year in 94. This was the first year of Halloween Horror Nights without a magic show. You now they had the Pen Dragons running for three years, and this year they had the Lounge Act and, and the game show instead. <clears throat> now, let's see. Was there anything I've missed? Uh, let's see, I think I covered all the haunted houses. And, oh yes, oh yes, entertainment. This was the last year that Robosaurus appeared in its original run at Halloween Horror Nights. From 92, 93, 94, the great Robosaurus was eating cars and breathing flame. But after, after it appeared in 94, we would not see Robosaurus again until 2006. We're gonna make one more, you know, appearance much later. And I also have to point out that there was a lot of, uh, you know, as I said with earlier years, you had a big stage set up with bands performing on peak nights. Now I didn't get on a peak night, and they may have had generic house band number two or whatever. But I know for a fact that Jerry Lee Lewis, living legend of rock and roll, was performing on one of the peak nights at, uh, at Halloween Horror Nights that year. So they had some top-notch entertainment uh, that year. And also, on Halloween, or close to it, they had a live broadcast uh, on Fox Network, where they called the Fox Halloween Bash, with whatever programs they showed on Fox that night on Halloween, uh, they would have the commercial bumpers in between the shows would be from Universal Studios Florida so that the event would have cross, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, the, the cross uh, uh, publicity for the Fox, uh, Fox Network and Universal Studios at that time. And on the Halloween bash, they had the cast of 90210, of all people. Uh, whoever the cast of 90210 were in 1994. And they were there, uh, along with others, filming this at various places in the park or wherever to, to be shown on television. So if you attended the event on, the, on Halloween night, and you're lucky, you might have been in the background walking around uh, and got yourself seen on television. So... All of this was happening, and so, as you can see, this was bigger in so many ways than the three previous years. But Universal could not possibly allow itself to sit on its laurels. 
because this was proving to be the great Halloween event of the area. And so they were looking forward to even better Halloween Horror Nights in 1995.